to honor not only students who have done excellent academic work, students who have gone through some of the hardest of our core courses, um, also celebrating the halfway point, yay, <laughs> students who have committed themselves to public service and who have really thought about how they want to see the university uh, mission grow, but more than that, to get public service outside of their classroom experience, to really go out into the community and to see how their work that they've been working on for many, many hours actually translates into community change. And so it's an honor for us to be able to induct you into the National Honor Society that, as Carol mentioned, is around the United States, around the globe that has been able to really honor students and, in, and create a network of people who can lean on each other who are really interested in how to make public service transform lives. How to really get people energized around the things that they care about, the issues that they enjoy. To use all the work that we do in public service and public administration, how do we bring all that academic energy into real life? And it's through you guys. And so we get a chance to honor you today. Now, it's a snowy day here in Colorado. It was icy, and so we got a lot of folks who said, I want to join, but who cannot join us today because they're stuck in the mountains. And we say, so sorry. So we will honor them by saying their names even though they're not here. When you, um, when you are called, come on and join me here. Do not leave, because we're going to do a group photo. And then Sam is also going to give you a pen. And so with that, the first name, although she is not here, no, she is here. Wow, we, we have restocked people for this. April Keller. and the way that it works here in UCCS um, connected to things that are outside of ourselves, things that are outside of the community. And so I want to thank our board members, Sam, Brad, Kyle, Andrea, and Carol, very, very much for all of your guys' hard work. And um, I hope that you guys will be able to join them as active members as well. Sam? Well, thank you, Dan. Um, it's always great to hear from Regina. She's been a great example to a lot of us. Um, Brad, I'll turn the time over to you. So my name is Brad Johnson, and I work here on campus. I work in planning, design, construction, which is part of our facility services area. I uh, started about six years ago, November of 2012, and at that time I thought about what my career might look like here on campus and what I would potentially look you know, <coughs> need to kind of you know grow in, in my job and stuff like that. And ended up taking the, the path through the public administration coursework and just graduated, graduated here this path May. So great experience and really uh, fun to be part of the board this year and uh, just a lot of opportunities we have over the next three years. So 
I'm going to take a, a moment here to introduce our speaker, Jamie Garcia, and just real thrilled that she was able to join us here tonight. And even though it's cold and icy and snowy and stuff like that, I guess it's not snowing anymore. But I'm um, just going to give you a brief uh, background of who Jamie is. Jamie is a Colorado Springs native and grew up in Black Forest. She married her high school sweetheart, Leo, in 2000, and they have two sons, Jeremy and Nathaniel. Jamie received her bachelor's and master's degree from UCCS. She started here 22 years ago on campus, uh, working in the Campus Writing Center and also in the office as a student recruitment. Um, she then uh, transferred over to work in the CU Foundation, and I had a chance to work with her in the Office of Advancement when we did the Incident for the Arts. Uh, today, Jamie serves at, as the Chief Philanthropy Officer for uh, Karen, Chu, Karen Chair Food Bank. In her, her role, she is focused on fundraising strategy, principal gifts, legacy gifts, and donor stewardship. In Jamie's free time, she enjoys camping and spending time with her family and her dogs. Jamie is passionate about her work, adores her family, and loves going to the or loves going to hockey games. She's a hockey mom, and we're just thankful, grateful, and blessed that she's here with us this evening. Just ask for a warm welcome and inviting Jamie up to the stage. Thank you. So, good evening, everybody, and congratulations to our inductees. That's pretty exciting. Um, as Brad mentioned, I did spend a good part of my career at, at UCCS, um, and. If you would have known me growing up, you would have never guessed that I would end up in a role of fundraising, ever, 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 ever. Um, I was fairly shy growing up, and um, you know there used to be this thing called Blockbuster Movie Place, <laughs> and I would be afraid to call and ask them what time they were open until. Like I was terrified of just interaction and talking to people if I didn't have to. So it was uh, funny how I ended up in a fundraising position. So it started because I believe very strongly in stewardship. I think it's very important. And I would say probably 20 years ago, I didn't even know what that word meant. Um, but I uh, ended up in a position here at the university where I didn't have to ask for money. I just had to thank people. And I really enjoyed thanking people. Um, and then. Uh, tried to figure out different ways to make people feel good and do thoughtful things for the donors to the university. And then one day I walked back into the office with a check, <coughs> a big check from a donor that I had been stewarding. And my boss at the time said, we might need to think about your career path. Um, so that's sort of why I'm here with you today is to talk a little bit about fundraising and um, overcoming some fears of fundraising. And, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that a top, well, there's two things. If you're going to do um, public speaking in front of someone, in front of a group, you want to make sure that you know the topic well. So when Brad extended an invitation for me to come talk to you, I needed to make sure that it was something that I knew something about. Otherwise, I'd be up here just kind of, you know, getting really nervous. But fundraising is something that I feel like I can talk pretty um, openly about and comfortably about because I have a team. I had a team when I was here at UCCS and I have a team over at Karen Share where I am now where I talk a lot about fundraising. Um, and also I think it's ironic that, you know, there's certain things in life that people fear. One is public speaking. <laughs> Two is death. I think public speaking comes before death, they say. And I think fundraising is probably number three. Mm -hmm. So I'm up here in front of you talking about two of those three things. Although I do legacy and plan giving, so I talk about death too. So um, <laughs> you know, all those three things that people fear, I can talk about. Um, you all have probably heard um, fear is forget everything and run. You've probably heard that before. Well. Um, not knowing exactly where your career path is going to take you, I thought I would just talk about some things, just, you know, big, big level, top level, that might be of help, not knowing what career path you're going to go into. Um, and then also hoping that for some of the board members, maybe I'll say something here and, and faculty that might be a nugget for something that you might need in your life. Um, probably um, the most important uh, piece that I can, that I would, sh okay, let me back up. So I did a lot of research when I was at the university. Um, I was a research assistant uh, to Pam Shockley and some of her work 
in organizational communication. So I am by nature a researcher. Everything that I'm gonna to share tonight is not research-based. It's experiential-based, just on my experience. So let me just put that out there. So take what you like that I say, leave the rest, because I'm not gonna talk about a bunch of data to you. I'm just gonna talk about experiences. So what careers might you have in this line of work? You might end up in a nonprofit. Um, you could end up in development like I'm in, or you may even be a CEO or executive director I feel like I'm looking to the side of the room because I feel like this is where our students are, so I apologize to this side, but um, so maybe you find yourself in some sort of executive director or CEO role. Um, also, if that doesn't seem to be what you might want to do, um, if that's not the area, the path you're following, keep in mind that there's probably a good chance that you'll be asked to serve on a board for a nonprofit. So keep that in mind too, because often if you are serving on a board of a nonprofit, um, the last committee that usually gets filled um, in, those, in those is the fundraising committee. So this is where you might say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take on this challenge, I wanna help this nonprofit with fundraising. So what I would say, um, and what I often say to my teams, is that you shouldn't, first of all, feel bad about fundraising or asking for money. It's very uncomfortable. Um, like I said, a lot of people, it's the last thing that they would want to do. Um, my Karen Chair Board, that committee is not the most exciting committee for people because they don't want to ask their friends for money. They don't want to put people out, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, but what I do tell my team is that you're not asking a person to put money in your personal checking account because that's different but you're asking for something that you're passionate about and it's important to you, and you wanna help get someone who has means to give money to something that needs money. And so one thing that I absolutely love about Care and Share is the mission statement. Um, it's bridging the gap between abundance and hunger. So that's my job, that's my role. I am bridging the gap. I'm talking to people who have abundance and have wealth, and people who need food, and we need money for food. So that's basically what I'm doing. Um, I kind of cringe when people say fundraising is like sales, because I feel like I'm, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I don't want to sell. I want to be a connector. And that, I think that's an important thing to think about if you're ever going to be in a role where you're asked to fundraise. It's funny, my kids are in um, hockey, basketball, we have so many fundraisers, I just want to die. <laughs> you know, it's like, I raise money for a profession, I don't want to do fundraisers for like butter braids or whatever those things are. Um, so it always makes me laugh because I think, oh, I just don't want to do that. Um, but you know, there are a lot of things in your life where you will be asked to help and, and facilitate some fundraising. So. Um, let me see, where was I gonna go with that? So, okay, so bridging the gap. So again, um, someone has abundance and somebody has a need and you're helping fill that gap. Um, another thing, and I'm just gonna share an experience at Karen Share because I think it might illustrate this. So not only um, is the abundance, for example, at Karen Share with people that have money, an abundance of money, but it's also food rescue and food waste. So there's an abundance of food that is not getting to people who need it. And so um, through my work, um, not only do I raise money, but I also help with food rescue and getting food um, out of our landfills and getting it to someone before it's <coughs> So you can think at, of, about it different ways, whether it's money or food or what it is, but just trying to help bridge that gap. So that is my very, very quick overview of not being afraid of fundraising. Um, if you're passionate about something, um, don't be afraid to, to let people feel that passion. Um, I would say if you have any interest in, in fundraising as a career, development as a career, um, then it's definitely something that you want to, be, want to become comfortable with. Um, and um, even our executive directors and CEOs, uh, they will go very far if they appreciate fundraising and development um, one thing that my CEO and president often says to me is she'll say, Jamie, what do you need me to do? Um, and that's because she understands, um, and when I worked here with Pam Shockley, same thing. 
um, a, a good executive director and CEO president understands that there is a role for them to play in fundraising. Um, you know, you don't have to love it, but if you're willing to understand it and work with it, then it's nothing to be afraid of. So, that is my spiel. Does anyone have any questions? So, our dean is fabulous. George? George. Yes. <laughs> George Reed is yeah. fabulous by going out and connecting people with these types of, 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 of asks, I would say. And I am horrible at it. And even though that I know our, our story pretty well, um, is there any advice you can give us a little bit about um, being prepared for that ask? Because he's got, he's got a set speech out of his pocket that is really cool. Mine's not really as cool. Um, <laughs> but is, there, is there something about that ask that, he, that makes it a little bit easier to sort of get people to think about the connection rather that can get someone who's as shy as I am to be able to you know, give that speech a little bit more convincing? Yeah, you know, that, I think that's, that's, that's great. I think for me, and again, this is just my experience, I think a lot of donors want to be heard. And so I like to spend a good amount of time with prospective donors and listen to their story and hear and understand why they might be passionate about what you are doing. Um, so, and it's really hard for people to do. It's so hard to listen and let somebody else talk. Um, so I would suggest, um, you know, do a little research on your prospect. Nothing creepy, nothing where they think you're stalking them, because if you know all their kids' names and everything, that's a little strange. But I do try to do enough. I mean, people put themselves on LinkedIn for a reason. So if at least you go on and see if they have a LinkedIn account <clears throat> or a Facebook account, you can get some, some basic information. And then I just ask a lot of questions. Now, because I know that some information about prospects, I kind of know which questions to ask, but then very quickly, they're gonna tell you that stuff about themselves and then it's not creepy anymore because <laughs> you've asked the right questions. Um, and I just find that when I allow people to share um, their experiences, they'll often say something that will trigger something. Um, you know, I had, when I worked here at the university, I had a donor who um, did a lot of work for single parents. And I couldn't quite, you know, it was sort of, and I didn't do this in the beginning, but there was a point where I said to him, like, why is this so important to you? And he had explained that not that he had come from a single parent home, but the best employee that he ever had um, in his career was a single mom. And he just watched how loyal she was and how hard she worked. And um, he just... He just thought that that was something that uh, needed attention was, um, you know, getting single parents through college. And so he, you know, started a scholarship here for that. Um, another example would be, you know, I, there's a donor that I'm working with at Karen Share. And, you know, she, she, we have um, Thanksgiving, um, take a turkey to work day this Friday. Just a little plug out there. So if you're going to be near King Supers, drop us off a frozen turkey. We'd appreciate it. Um, or $10 buys a turkey. But um, she's very passionate about uh, Take a Turkey to Work Day. And so we were, we were having a conversation and she told me that there was a point in her life when she, all she ate was cucumbers. And she said that's all she could afford was cucumbers. And so now that she's got a you know, good job and a, and a good career that she feels like she you know, owes it to pay it forward. So it's, once a, a donor trusts you enough to kind of tell you like why they would do it, then I think that's where you make that, um, that connection. I also love, absolutely love and prefer when it's the donor's idea. When I just tell the donor, like, here's some opportunities, you know. Um, in fact, the very first uh, uh, endowment for the College of Education was one that I was able to work on. And it was me meeting with this gentleman and just talking to him about his, his, his wife who had passed and she was a graduate of the School of Education. It was a school at the time, School of Education, now it's College of Education. Um, but him just talking about her passion for education and we just talked and talked and you know, I said, Is, how would you like to honor her? What are you thinking? And he was like, gosh, a scholarship in her name would be amazing. 
And so we started talking about that, and I was like, well, what about an endowment, you know, that could go on in perpetuity? And, but it was, it was his idea. I just had the information to kind of help guide him into what I think would make him feel really good. So, does that help? It does. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to agree with everything that you have said, because <laughs> I've looked at fundraising from both sides. After my wife died about five years ago, I made a sizable donation to Semper Violence Fund to dedicate a Redwood Grove in her name. And Amanda Krauss was the person I worked with at Semper Violence. And she and I walked Redwood Groves together for a whole day in Big Basin Redwood State. And she found out about the family, she found out about everything. And she just worked with me so that when we were done, my sense was that I had done something to help that organization, but they had done a lot to help me. So you build a relationship and then that follows. I'm also on the board of a couple organizations and what you said is exactly right. You will be asked to be on the board and your question is going to be to yourself, which board and what are my strengths and what do I have to give? Mm -hmm. And if you're on a board because you believe in an organization, then fundraising isn't a problem. That's right. Because you're saying, this is what we do, and this is why I'm so proud of who we are and what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And if you can communicate that with clarity and passion, mm -hmm. then you are a good representative. Maybe you won't get a gift from them, but you'll get a gift from the next person or the one after that. And it's all sales. It really is. But it's sales in terms of paying it forward. And relationships, too. And relationship yeah, building. I agree. Yeah. And I think that's why I always cringe when people say sales, because I always consider sales like you buy a car and then you know that that person doesn't even remember your name the next week, <laughs> you know? But, but when I think of the donors, especially when I, I'm back on this campus and I think about the, the, the scholarships and the endowments and the planned giving um, things that I was able to set up with some folks, it's like, I really got to know those folks. And to be part of something that is so, especially on a big planned gift, you know, somebody wants to leave a million dollars to the university and nobody even knows they have that kind of money, that's awesome. And they let you in on that little secret that they have this wealth and you're gonna keep that close to the chest because it's nobody else's business, but you get to help them make some decisions about their giving, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool, yeah. I'm just gonna <laughs> say, I would be a staff member at an organization where we have board members and trying to get them motivated. I, I love what Dr. Klingner said as well, but are there any other fun things that you do with your board members to get them motivated on the fundraising committee that you could just share fun creative things? Uh, yeah, I, I really think the biggest hesitation with boards is they don't want to ask their friends. I feel like they want to protect that friend space and I do know that there are some folks in our community that are arm twisters. And if they twist their buddy's arm to give to this nonprofit, then they have to return the favor. I know that that happens, that happens. But um, there's some people that just don't feel like they want to do that. They don't want to jeopardize friendships. So um, it's really about, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember who said it up here. Is it Carol? Are you Carol? Yes. Okay, I just make sure I didn't make that up. Carol was up here talking about networking. So maybe, you know, you're going to more events and you're out in the community more and you meet people and you have your friends introduce you to other friends and you get this bigger network. Then, you know, you're having coffee with someone that's not your best friend, but a good friend of a friend. And then you guys start talking about some passion that you both have. And then there you go. You know, you're not asking your friend. So. It's, it's really difficult, I think, to, to get uh, board members not fearful of fundraising, but they just have to be willing to talk about the mission. Um, and again, it's not for selfish reasons, it's because they're very passionate about it. Yeah, so maybe know that before they join the fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we have one gentleman on our fundraising committee at Karen Share, 
and he um, he's excited about goals, you know, and he set this, you know, he wants the, the board to raise 50K for our luncheon in March with these matching gifts. So he's trying to get the board to all go out and come together with, with enough for 50K so that at the luncheon we can do a match. And so sometimes some of those creative things might get a board member energized, but I think, I think a lot of them hide. So I guess what I would say to you though, is you will be a well set up board member and you will be a fabulous director of development or CEO or executive director if you are not afraid of the challenge of fundraising. Because there's a lot of people that don't like to do it. Thank you.